Hi guys, another week has passed in Maymeister's high school kerfuffle, and we're on to episode 4 now. Last week we had an absolute classic, Asteroids Deluxe, released by Atari in 1981. This was a suggestion from ye older gamer Steve, but I didn't mention last week that it was also submitted by Ten Shearers and Multi Swimbuckle. And Panther UK had submitted the original Asteroids, so it had been a popular choice. I'm glad we've ended up with this rather than the original too, as it fixes some of the exploits that are possible in the original. The downside is that it's pretty tough which was a deliberate choice from Atari to limit playtime per quarter. We were playing on the hard difficulty and with the minimum two lives, so it certainly was quite the challenge. It also made the bonus lives every 10,000 even more valuable. As I mentioned last week, this game originally came out on a vector display, and as many of Alan's viewers will know with his Vectrex features, it is almost impossible to emulate a vector display. On original hardware, these games look great. I was playing on a CRT, with the brightness turned up and in a darkened room. It looks pretty good, but it certainly doesn't pop the way that the vector monitor does. Playing this, it really reminded me of Mindstorm on the Vectrex that I loved as a kid, and I really enjoyed playing Asteroids this week, despite not having a huge amount of time to play. I felt like I was able to get on top of the early part of the game, and then it was a roll of the dice how far I got as the pace quickened. The real challenge of the game is handling the UFOs. The accuracy of them is massively increased in the original, and the tiny UFO makes things extremely challenging. I was generally just trying to avoid it and use the shield to block its shots. In some ways, I liked it being difficult. This means that playtime is reduced and you can get more games in during a session. That means it's not so much of a time drain. With this week done, let's take a look at the scores. We had 18 submissions this week, which is a decent showing, and up slightly on last week. We had a couple of new submitters, Retrotron 2084, who has played but not submitted a score, and Retro Arcade Challenge, who finished with 13,000 points. Both of these guys can be found on Instagram. Panther UK mustn't have had much time this week, as he's finished down in an unusual 11th. Robert Morrison is in the points again, in 10th. Colin has his first points on the board in 9th, and as per usual has streamed his efforts on Twitch and uploaded the vid to YouTube. Milthy Swimbuckle is another first point scorer in 8th, and given he chose the game, it's no surprise he's done reasonably well. The top 7 is made up of the usual faces, in a slightly different order. Ian is in 7th, Weebob slightly down in 6th, Paulie Moz in 5th, and a good effort from Big Chuffer with his best result so far in 4th. Our top 3 is then made up of me in 3rd, which I'm pretty pleased with, and then our top 2 is once again Ten Shearers and Andrew Lowe, who both were quite a way ahead of everyone else. But this week it's Andrew taking the top spot and with an excellent score of 64,000. Well done to Andrew, and once again he'll get his game choices boosted this week. Regarding the distribution of scores, here we've got something approaching a normal distribution, which is nice. This is kind of what you might expect with a scoring system that is somewhat linear. We've got the stragglers on the left, but over on the right we see a grouping of 8th to 4th who are all very close to each other. Then there's a bit of a gap to me and Big Jaffa, Ten Shearer slightly ahead in the next bin, and then Andrew out in front. Andrew isn't as far out in front as he was in the first week, or Ten Shearer's was last week, but he's still taking the win this week by a significant margin, a decent way ahead of everyone else. Let's see what's happened to the league table. The overall leaderboard hasn't changed much. Mr Cosine is down 2, with first scores from Colin and Milthy, moving into 11th and 12th. Ian is down 2, into 7th, having been overtaken by Paulie Moz and myself, who are now tied on points. Our top four is splitting into two battles. We Bob and Big Juffer are close for third and fourth, and our top two are beginning to separate themselves from the pack. Ten Shearers remains in second, but continuing to lead, now with a 13 point gap, is our permanent fixture, Andrew. Let's see if this week's game can shake things up. Once again, I've got the games loaded into the random selector, with Andrews appearing twice. Ten Shearers was open for Flicky, so let's set things going and see what we get. Okay, there we go, there's the selector. Press again, what are we going to get? Okay, so it's Choplifter from Colin. So I've heard of Choplifter, but I really don't know anything about it. I'll go look it up, get a video out, and I'll see you soon. So, this week's game is Choplifter, released by Sega in 1985. Interestingly, this is a game that first appeared on home systems and was subsequently ported to the arcade as a remake by Sega. The original game was developed by Dan Gorlin for the Apple II computer and released in 1982 by Broadband Software. The game was subsequently ported to the C64, which is probably where Colin's experience of it is. 
The reason I'd heard of it was the Master System port of the remake, which curiously also appeared on Nintendo's Famicom. As the name suggests, you take control of a helicopter and your aim is to rescue people and lift them to safety, whilst avoiding enemy planes and the ground targets that are trying to shoot at you. My first play of this was absolutely shocking, no idea what to do. I've done a little better here, but I find the controls of the chopper really unintuitive. I'm sure I'll get used to them, but there's definitely a learning curve. I also really struggle to get a working ROM. This is the unprotected ROM, but I'll ask Colin to advise on the version to use, and I'll put that in the description as usual. So, a Sega game, which should be right up my street, but with tricky controls and issue with ROMs, I've not got off to the best start. I hope you guys get on a little better, and I'll be back next week with the scores. See you then. Ooh.